Welcome back to our Pamela's Pro Workout video series, where we take a closer look at the more unique and powerful features of the Pam Pro. Today, we'll explore looping using the loop wake, nap, and shift functions to add musical structure and space to patterns and CV. The Pam Pro's looping function is a powerful tool for track building and composition capturing and repeating any signals generated by the outputs. Let's take a closer look at some advanced looping techniques. In this first patch, we have pre-patched a beat, which will deconstruct down into a minimal ambient track using loop wake and loop nap. The beat is sequenced entirely by random triggers produced via the probability settings on outputs 1 through 6. Let's set a short loop size for each output, starting with the first which is triggering our kick sound. Using the next out shortcut we can jump between outputs to quickly set each loop. With the beat fully looping, let's begin to adjust loop wake and nap. We'll start with the kick, leaving loop wake set to a single loop and increasing the nap amount to four loops. Loop wake sets the number of actual played loops, with nap setting the number of loops that the output will shut off for. Increasing loop nap with differing amounts between outputs begins to separate and disconnect the triggering of sounds in our beat. With all outputs now only periodically playing loops, we've transformed the busy beat into a deconstructed ambient track. Loop Wake and Nap provide a new way to control patterns and modulation, allowing for signals to be spaced and repeated with a long-form approach. In this next patch, we'll use looping to alternate between two oscillators, creating a call and response type melody from a single sequence. We'll start by connecting quantized random to control the pitch of both oscillators together. Let's loop the random to create a repeating sequence. We'll then tune the TASM O upper fifth from the MCO. Let's connect outputs 2 and 3 to the trigger inputs of the two pip slopes. We'll then connect the envelope outs to control the VCA level for each oscillator.
let's move to output 2 and engage a short 2 beat loop. Then set a single loop nap. We'll do the exact same thing for output 3. We can hear the pair of outputs now wake and nap together. Let's use loop shift to swap the wake and nap loops for output 3. The two oscillators now alternate playback with a call and response type melody. Let's return to the pitch sequence on output 1 and double the size of its loop. There are now two iterations of call and response, as the melody is split up into four parts. Let's return to output 2 and lower the loop size to one beat. We'll do the same for output 3. The melodies now alternate twice as fast. We'll add some wave shape modulation to both oscillators using a triangle wave LFO from output 4. Let's alter the number of wake and loop naps for the two outputs to trigger the voices in a less uniform way. Layering loops between different outputs is a great way to make simple sequences more interesting. A call and response type melody like this is just one of the many ways loop, wake and nap can be used to alter the playback structure of patterns. In this final patch, we'll design a drum fill across four outputs and position it at the end of each bar using loop, nap and wake. Here, the bottom four outputs of PAM are sequencing our bass beat, with the top four set up ahead of time to produce complex rhythms for our fill. Starting with output five, let's enable the cross operation and set it to mix with output one. Immediately, we can hear the two outputs combined. Moving to output six, we'll continue mixing the rhythms between vertically aligned output pairs using the cross ops. With the four output pairs combined, we now have an overly complex beat. Let's briefly halt the playback and set the top four outs to produce triggers to only act as drum fills. Starting with output one, we'll navigate to the loop page and set it to four beats, or one fourth of our bar length. We'll match these loop settings for the entire top row of outputs. We'll then leave loop wake set to one and increase the number of napped loops to three for a total of 16 beats. Finally, we'll use loop shift to move the single played loop to the end of the bar.
With the fill set up, let's begin playback. We can hear our beat is back to normal, but now includes a brief additional pattern at the end of each bar. Let's add further variation to the fill. First, we'll increase loop nap to cause the snare fill to trigger every other bar. We'll do the same for the hi-hat fill. Now let's shift the clap fill to occur at the start of the bar. Finally, we'll set it to trigger every other bar as well. When combined with cross operations, loop, wake and nap provide a simple but highly flexible way to add variation, breaking up the repetition of beats and modulation signals by introducing brief moments of change. Thanks for watching this closer look at the loop, wake, nap and shift functions of Pamela's Pro Workout. The powerful looping parameters are great for introducing repetition that provides additional music structure and space. Of course, we've only scratched the surface of what is possible here and recommend experimenting with the loop parameters yourself to unlock new and exciting functionality from the Pan Pro. For more information on Pamela's Pro Workout and the rest of the ALM line, please visit busycircuits.com.